MPs will have an option to access in-person training on sexual harassment. As first reported in the Hill Times, the House of Commons is hoping to offer 20 in-person sessions between February and June. In the last few years, several MPs and senators have faced complaints of sexual harassment or misconduct, but the only training on offer has been online, and not all MPs agree that this training is necessary. Are they educated enough on the issue? How should Parliament Hill combat such behavior? Well, joining me now to talk about that in studio is Karen Ludwig. Uh, she's a New Brunswick Liberal MP, and by FaceTime from Sarnia, Ontario, we have the Conservative health critic Marilyn Gladue. We asked for a member of the NDP, but no one was available today. Uh, Marilyn Glado, can I d start with you, if you don't mind? Uh, the House of Commons administration, it, I gather, is still figuring out just exactly how these, these training sessions would work. Uh, but they're hoping to offer as many as 22-hour sessions for MPs to take part in. They're considering sessions for st staff as well. Good idea? Bad idea? What do you think? Well, Terry, I, I think, you know, raising awareness and, and having training on, on sexual harassment and what is, you know, harassing behavior is always good. There are a lot of people who have already been working in the private sector that may have received a lot of training. I personally received, you know, lots of training at the different uh, multinational companies I worked with. But for those who haven't received training, you know, this is important. If, if the online training wasn't sufficient, I took the online training. I, I thought it was excellent and adequate. But for those who really need to be sure, you know, what is crossing the line and what is not, I think this is a great opportunity for them. Karen Ludwig, what do you think about that? Yeah, I, as a longtime educator before I was a member of parliament, certainly education and all of this is absolutely key. And online training is only one aspect. Our government took a real initiative through National Caucus and offered us training, you know, as a large group. And we were able uh, to ask questions and even ask questions of each other. And I think that's part of all of this is getting a dialogue going between men and women um, of what, you know, what bothers us, what doesn't bother us. Could they do this? Could they do that? But our audience is bound to be scratching their heads and wondering, what really, people get elected to the Parliament of Canada and they don't know? when no means no? I mean, really? Um, I think that's all part of the, the education aspect of, you know, the subtle nuances that maybe we don't realize that maybe bother someone else. But as, if someone is, it trusts the process and is able to come forward and say, that actually really bothers me. I mean, that, I think that's an important step. And so often that, is, that has not been happening. So I really, uh, you know, look at this as a nonpartisan issue, regardless of which party uh, any one of us sits in in the House of Commons. We have a responsibility, just as our Prime Minister has shown, you know, asked us to take action. He's definitely shown leadership. And we all have that responsibility, not only to raise it amongst our constituents, but amongst each other and Mar with Mar our Hill staff. Sorry for interrupting. Marilyn, glad to do the same question to you. People are going to be astonished, are they not? And they're entitled to be astonished that MPs don't already know the rules of the game. Well, Terry, I think it's important to note that, you know, there's a, a distinction uh, in, in different levels of behavior. Across the country, one in four Canadian women experience uh, sexual violence in their lifetime. Okay, so there's a big difference between sexual violence and offensive comments. That doesn't mean either one are acceptable, but I think there is, um, you know, what's offensive to one person may not be offensive to another person, and that's an area where people may need education. That once an individual has said, you know, that's offensive, um, they need to stop that behavior. That said, there's what's considered normal behavior and what's not. I've got another question I want to put to both of you, and that is whether politics doesn't make this rather more complicated. Uh, in, in the sense that uh, somebody might not want to report uh, improper actions by somebody on their own team, a member of their own political party, because they're hobbling their own team. Marilyn Gladue, what, isn't that potentially a problem? Terry, I would say that the process that exists today is painful for both the victim and the person accused. It, it takes months and, and a lot of people are in knowledge of what's going on, and that's perhaps not the best way uh, for the resolution to occur. So I think we need to get to a place where people recognize uh, what is unacceptable behavior and, and they stop with that. Um, that will remove the need for complaints. When complaints are made, I think they need to be dealt with with confidentiality and respect for both you know, those that are offended and those that are accused. Karen Ludwig, same question to you. It, 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 it is a complicating factor, isn't it, when it, it's maybe somebody on your own side and an MP can, could potentially uh, lose his or her job 
uh, for stepping over the line, and you might not want to do that to somebody on your own, in your own party, right? Well, I think, Terry, that actually speaks to a much larger issue. Regardless of the work setting, it is intimidating and scary to, you know, to put that information forward and share that. You have to trust in the process. You have to, uh, you know, take the risk of a potential retaliation. And I really believe that our, our government, you know, and certainly if we're looking at Parliament as an example, we need to show that leadership so that, you know, men and women can come forward with confidence, you know, as Marilyn has so, so graciously identified with confidentiality, that they will be believed. These are survivors. And we can certainly learn from those that come forward. We can learn from the practices. We can learn from how they are reacted to and what worked and what didn't work. All right. One more for both of you, if you don't mind. And that is, first, Karen, where, uh, what is the thing that, you know, if you want to make sure that they, this time they really do get it. The online didn't work. There's, they're still not, they're still just not getting the rules of the game. What is the thing that you hope would come out of in-person, one-on-one sessions to, that, that people should be told so that this time they really do get it? I think there's, a, I wouldn't discount the online uh, training. I think that's one avenue, certainly, that we may work for some, maybe not for others. Uh, the one-on-one -on -one sessions, I think, are important. I think part of that is being open, you know, being able to trust that the responses and the conversations that are being had that are, one, held confidential, confidentially, and that something will, some action will take place in that, and that it eventually will also lead into policy. But this is not, this is well beyond, you know, one party. This is well beyond government. This is really a national issue. And we not only have Canadians from coast to coast to coast that are looking at us and looking for, you know, a positive outcome and a leadership role. We have uh, many, uh, you know, people internationally that are also looking at Canada to take the leadership and, and to continue with the leadership that our Prime Minister and others have taken in the House of Commons. And Marilyn Gladder, what do you think is the, uh, is the one aspect of myopia, if you will, of, of, of the people who don't get it need to be told uh, that make it worthwhile for taxpayers to pay for such courses? Well, I, I think it's excellent that there's training available at all levels for people to get. What I think is even better is that there's a huge awareness that's happened as a result of um, discussion and all the incidents that have come forward. And as that awareness happens, people are ever so more careful about what they say and what they do. And that's what we want to drive is better behavior. As Karen said, this is an issue, you know, across all parties, across our country, and we all want to get to a better place. And I'm glad that you were both able to come in and talk about it. Appreciate it very much. Thanks to Karen Ludwig and Marilyn Gladue. Appreciate this very much. Thanks, Sorry we're Terry. out of time. Thank I, you. I, there's always more to add.